Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone here this morning. A special welcome to our guests and visitors. We pray that your time here is a blessing for you this morning. Uh, and it's great seeing everybody here. Uh, this is the day the Lord has made, as someone told me this morning. Uh, let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, our order of service this morning is Divine Service 1 on page 151. And just kind of a note there, uh, we'll be uh, singing the Glory in Excelsius. Uh, rather than the this is the feast canticle this morning so uh, just remember this is the uh, the glory in Celsius this morning um, other than that the service will be pretty straightforward uh, uh, the offertory hymn will be 956 created me as well all right uh, well our opening hymn is hymn number 839 oh Christ our true and only light let's go ahead and sing our opening hymn I invite you to please stand as we begin in remembrance of our baptism in the name of our triune God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. 
And Almighty God in His mercy has given His Son to die for you, and for His sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by His authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we continue with the intro found on the, our insert in our bulletins this morning. You will arise and have pity on Zion. Let this be recorded for our generation to come. That he looked down from his holy height. To hear the groans of the prisoners, to set free those who are that they may declare in Zion the, in the, the name of the Lord, and in Jerusalem His grace. When peoples gathered together, and the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, mercy look upon our infirmities and stretch forth the hand of your majesty to heal and defend us through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson for this third Sunday after the Epiphany comes uh, from uh, the book of Nehemiah, the eighth chapter. And all the people gathered as one man into the squ square uh, before the water gate. And they told Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses that the Lord had commanded Israel. So Ezra the priest brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could understand uh, what they heard on the first day of the seventh month. And he, and he read from it, facing the square before the water gate, from early morning until midday. 
in the presence of the, of the men and the women and those who could understand. And the ears of the people were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of, of all the people, for he was above all the people as he opened it, all the people uh, opened it where all the people stood. And Ezra blessed the Lord, uh, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. They read from the book, of, uh, from the law of God, clearly, and they gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah was the, gov was the governor, and Ezra the priest and scribe. And the Levites who taught the people said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep. For all the people wept as they heard the words of the law. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, and drink sweet wine, and send uh, portions to anyone who has nothing ready. For, that, for this day is holy to our Lord. And do not be grieved, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle lesson this morning comes from uh, letter to, the first letter uh, uh, to the Corinthians of St. Paul, the 12th chapter. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. For the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Yet the foot should say, because I, have, I am not a hand, I, I, did, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I do not need, I have no need of you, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable, and on those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our unrepresentable parts are, uh, are treated with greater modesty, which our more presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it, that there would be no division in the body, but that the members may have the same care for one another. If one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. Now you are the body of Christ, and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administrating, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work miracles? Do all possess gifts of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? but earnestly desire the higher gifts. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel and let us sing the Alleluia verse on page 156. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. The Holy Gospel is according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up to read. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty those who are oppressed. To proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. 
And he rolled up the scroll and gave it back to the attendant and sat down. And the eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. And he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled uh, in your hearing. And all spoke well of him and marveled at the gracious words that were coming from his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me the, this proverb, Physician, heal yourself. What we have heard you, you did at Capernaum, do here in your hometown as well. And he said, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his hometown. But in truth I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up for three years and six months, and a great famine came over all the land. And Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath, in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them were cle was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard these things, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and drove him out of the town, and brought him to the brow of the hill on which uh, their town was built, so they could throw him down the cliff. But passing through their midst, he went away. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. I invite the children to come forward for a message this morning. Right, Jacob. Morning, Caleb. Morning, guys. I've oh, got a couple more coming. Go ahead and have a seat. Go ahead and have a seat. Good morning, Wes. Good morning, Sophia. How are you doing? Awesome. Anyway, other yeah, coming. All right. Well, how are you guys doing this morning? Good. Good. Now, I got a few questions I would like to ask you this morning. They're gonna be silly questions, but there's a point to it. Okay. How many of you have hands? Okay. How many of you have like five fingers on one hand, five fingers on another hand? Yeah. How many have feet, two feet, and ten toes? Okay. How many of you have ears to hear, eyes to see? You have all these things, right? Yeah. You know, the Apostle Paul talked to us this morning about uh, that as being members of the church, we are part of the body of Christ. And he compared it to a human body. He says, you know, each of one of us is like a different part of the body. Each has a special gift and a special function. For example, you know, if I didn't have my right hand, I, you know, I'd have to write with my left hand, and I'm not left-handed. So my penmanship would be a lot worse than it is with my right hand, right? If I didn't ha have a foot, um, or a leg that would inhibit my ability to, to walk, to run, right? Yeah. Uh, if we didn't have an eye, we couldn't see, right? If we didn't have ears, we couldn't hear. Each, each body function has a special gift and talent that it uses to serve the rest of the body, you know? And these are just the things we can see. I mean, we have our mind, which, uh, you know, where our thoughts come from. We have our hearts which uh, pump and they beep uh, and push blood around the body to, and everything. And if the, the heart would automatically say, oh, I'm not going to serve the rest of the body today, that wouldn't be very good, would it? No. But you know, God has called you into the body of Christ. And he's done so in baptism. In baptism, you became a part of Christ's body. He's the head and we are individually members of his body body, but we also receive the Holy Spirit who works uh, gifts and talents in each of us. Now, I don't know about you, uh, as you're uh, growing, you're guys at, at different stages, some gifts and talents you might have kind of discovered for yourself already. There might be some more gifts that you haven't even thought you could do, right? Um, and, and, and maybe the same thing for, for, for you and, and for your parents too. You know, each of us has these gifts and talents, and sometimes we don't really know what those are. 
And some, like God calls us to use those gifts in a way, and sometimes it might be that first time we use those gifts. Like, you guys were up here uh, uh, last month and were leading the service, sharing the story of Christmas, right? How many of you thought you could do that right away, you know, when you're asked to do it? It's like, well, I don't know if I could do that. But yet, God gave you that gift and that talent, didn't he? And we use those gifts and talents and, and those and many others to serve the church, to serve God's people, but also to take the most precious gift that we've been given, which is Jesus. And we take him uh, with us as we go out to the world, as we go to our family, our friends, uh, uh, fellow students at school, as you get older, fellow uh, uh, workers, uh, wherever you, you have a job. And we can share the love of Christ with them so that they may know that Christ loves them just as much as he loves you and has made you to be part of his body, the church. Should we bow our heads for a word of prayer? Gracious Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for uh, the gift of being made part of your body. And thank you for the gifts and talents uh, that you give us to us through the Spirit. Help us to use those gifts and talents, Lord, um, not only to help your people, but to share your precious word with others. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for coming up. And uh, you may return to your seats. And as they do so, I invite the congregation to turn to page, uh, hymn number 706, Loving Christ Strong and Living. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, in 1976, a movie came out called The Bad News Bears. How many of you remember that, that movie, right? Many of us did. Uh, if you're a little bit on the younger side, they kind of kind of revamped The Bad News Bears uh, and, and kind of made that movie uh, The Mighty Ducks, right? Instead of baseball, it's, it's really dealing with... Uh, Hockey and stuff. So, same basic plot line and story, but I'm going to focus on the Bad News Bears here this morning. So, in this movie, you have a hodgepodge group of kids who come together to form a baseball team. And Walter Matthau is the coach, and he has to uh, get these kids together. He has to, well, keep them from leaving the team and then getting them to work together uh, uh, throughout the movie. Now, it sounds a little bit like the church, doesn't it? Uh, our, is the church uh, a hodgepodge group of forgiven sinners uh, whom the Father has called into his family uh, by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to be uh, our Savior who died on the cross for our sins, who uh, won for us eternal life, and who also gives us the Holy Spirit who works many gifts in us, partly, uh, and, and brings us into the family of God and really on to God's team. And on God's team, we each have a part to play. And it's a team that is destined to compete 
and to win. And each one of you, each, each one of you is a member of Christ and a precious member of God's team. Uh, as we uh, heard in the children's message, as we uh, heard in the epistle lesson, uh, St. Paul, uh, uh, he compares our identity in Christ in, as part of the church with a human body, right? And, we, and as, we, as he does so, he says, you know, each part has a special function. A hand can't say to the foot, I don't need you. The eye can't say to the hand, I don't need you, because it would wipe away the dust from our eyes if that were the case. You know, the eyes and the ears and the mouth can't say to the head, I have no need of you, because then where would they be, right? Each part is special and unique, and it's the same way the church. Each of us comes from various backgrounds, right? Uh, Paul says, you know, some are slaves, some are uh, uh, free, uh, some uh, are from a different religious background, some are from a different political background. There's those who are different, from different economic backgrounds, there are those from different ethnic backgrounds and other uh, cultural backgrounds, but yet God brings all together into the body of Christ because Christ died for all people and he won salvation for all people. And he brings us into this wonderful community, this wonderful fellowship that we call the church, the body of Christ. And as he does so in baptism, the Holy Spirit works in us various gifts and talents to be used to serve the rest of the body of Christ and to serve and sharing the gospel in the world today. Now, I don't know about you, uh, there's a lot of things that happen in church that we, we really don't see happening, right? You know, each week, you know, uh, and throughout the season, we have people who change the pyramids up here uh, from, uh, from uh, season to season. There's those who will set the Lord's table uh, for uh, communion when we celebrate the Lord's Supper. Uh, there's those who take care of the baptismal font when uh, we have a baptism. Uh, this, uh, on Friday, we had Kathleen's uh, funeral. So uh, we had those who prepared for that, those who arranged the flowers that were uh, left here uh, to bless God's people here in worship service this morning. Um, there's those who fill candles. There's those who play, whether it be the organ or the keyboard or any other instrument over there, and there's those that sing. And, and where would we be if uh, these same people uh, would say, you know, I don't know if I have a gift or talent to be able to do those things. You know, maybe I don't have that gift and talent to sing, but yet how many of us can still make that joyful noise to the Lord that gives an encouraging uh, shout to God and, and to, to each of us as we hear others proclaiming the praises of God along with us. You know, there's things that are always done in the background. There's people that clean up the, uh, clean up the church. There's people who put the hymn numbers on the board. There's people who mow. There's people who uh, shovel snow. There's people who do all sorts of things. There's people that serve on boards. All the various boards, and I just like to say thank you to all those who have served on boards uh, last uh, over the last year. May have, have uh, uh, gotten off the boards and uh, or have served on boards in the past, and, and thank you to those who are now serving on boards who are, who are new and those who continue to serve. But I also I've often heard people say, you know, I don't know if I can serve on say the board of education or the board of elders. I just don't know if I got that gift or talent. But the thing is, is that somebody. I saw something in you that said, you know, that person might be a good elder. That person might be a good member on the board of education. But I think a lot of times what we fear is messing up, right? Uh, you know, we're, we're afraid that if we mess up something, then someone's going to criticize us. And we just don't want to hear that, right? But yet we can't let something like that stop us from serving Christ, because there are still those who love and will encourage us. Um, you know, I don't know one member who is a first-year, first-term member on a board who did everything perfectly. In fact, I don't even know a person who's on the third year of a second term, and maybe the fifth time around on being a board of, uh, on the board of Ed or Board of Elders, who did everything perfectly either. 
And, you know, I can't really think of one thing that I do that's perfect either. Uh, I'm constantly messing things up from time to time. But yet, we love and we forgive one another, and we are there to encourage. And sometimes God puts special people in the congregation who have that gift and talent of encouragement, to encourage us in our walk of faith, to encourage us to do those things as well. And, and I see that as my role as, as a pastor to encourage. You know, each week I have a, 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 the blessing of coming before you, sharing God's word, uh, proclaiming the gifts of God, administering the sacraments. Uh, throughout the week, I'll go visit the sick and, and those who are homebound and, and, and uh, visit with all people who might be struggling with uh, a particular issue. And what a blessing that is to be able to share that. And as I, as I do so, I'm hoping and praying that God's using me to encourage you in your faith and encourage you in the gifts and talents that God has given to you. And, by, and also to equip you for those various things. Uh, you know, Paul tells us that uh, God gives some to be apostles and, and uh, prophets and pastors and, and uh, to encourage and to equip the rest of the body that we might serve together in the body of Christ. What would happen if, if the heart in the body would automatically say, you know, I'm not going to serve the body anymore? Heart attack, right? The body doesn't survive. You see, each of us has a vital role. Each of you is vital in the body of Christ. Now, it's Christ who works through us. Don't get me wrong. Christ is working through us. But he uses each and every one of us in small ways and in big ways to serve the rest. And as, as we do so, it's all meant to build up the body of Christ. That Christ's body may be built as we share the word of God, as we share the gospel uh, with others, whether it's our members of our own family, our friends, our co-workers, whatever it might be, God is using us. And, and uh, while there might be struggles at hand, we see through those struggles as the Spirit works in us, those, that perseverance that comes along with that, the love for one another, and the encouragement to give to one another. And maybe receive that for ourselves from time to time as we serve in those functions. You know, we know how the movie turned out with the Bad News Bears, right? I mean, at first... Things didn't go so well, right? They were kind of picking on each other. They were fighting. They, they did get along, but eventually they grew to love one another and to work together. And by the end of the movie, by the end of the big game, they were champions. In Christ, the victory has already been won. We are already part of God's team. And God's team is the winning team. Because Christ has won that victory for us at the cross and through his open tomb. And so with Paul, uh, uh, who said, who's, we can get thanks to God, who says, thanks be to God who gives us that victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Each of you has that victory. And each of you are part of God's team, his, his body, the church. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Savior, to life everlasting. Amen. At this time, uh, I invite you to uh, stand as together we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, 
and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In thanksgiving to the Lord of Zion, who has arisen and shown pity to our fallen world, sending us free from our sin and death. In thanksgiving for Christ, in whom, uh, in whom the appointed time of favor has come for all people, and for the gift of the Holy Spirit in the word of God, that Christ's name would be declared among all peoples, and his grace received with delight in every place. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For eagerness to hear the word of God with understanding, as in the days of Ezra the priest, that with attentive ears we may receive it, uh, our, receive it, and our days be sanctified by it, and his commandments be put into practice among us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For harmony in the Christian church, are arranged as members of one body in Christ Jesus, that we may be free of jealousy or contempt toward our fellow Christians. Bestow honor on weaker brothers, suffer and rejoice together, and serve in harmony as those baptized in one spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all families and homes, that one generation may tell the next the wonderful works of God in Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who govern our communities and country, that they would be given wisdom and courage to lead, that they would uh, follow God's will rather than man's whims, and that our Father would grant us willingness to support them with our prayers and encouragement. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the comfort of those who mourn and the care of those who are in need of healing, we especially remember Hayden Friedrichs, uh, uh, Sierra Garaki, Lois M. Bartles, Mary Jo Fodish, Esther Beathy, Elvina uh, Lemire, Shirley Fry, Jim Bornpaul, Emma Walters, Marianne Waller, Pastor Donald Cooper, Mary Mommins, Laverne Bartles, Sophie Carnegie, Sean Otmer, and Ellen DeYoung. That the great physician would mend the bodies and uplift the spirits of all those in need of his compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who mourn, as we especially remember the families of Pastor Bob Schirmbeck and uh, David Llewellyn, the brother of Pastor Llewellyn, that they would be comforted in the hope that Christ has conquered death through his resurrection and promises that all those who die in him are gathered in his arms to await the resurrection on the last day. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the persecuted, we especially remember uh, the Reverend Dr. Uh, Ioana Pajola, the Bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Mission Diocese in Finland, and Dr. Pavi Rasinen, the Finnish Member of Parliament, who go on trial tomorrow for their faith uh, because they faithfully taught God's word, which has now been considered a hate crime. We pray, Lord, that the Lord would close the mouths of the governmental and cultural lions that he would pray that and we pray that he would uh, uh, ex uh, work to where uh, his people would be exonerated and the Finnish government would repent of this rebellion against his will and his word. We also pray uh, for our own nation as similar forces of Satan are at work in our land that the Lord would make pastors and people here more bold in their witness to Christ and more faithful to his word. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, we gratefully remember the sufferings and death of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, for our salvation. Rejoicing in his victorious resurrection from the dead, we draw strength from his ascension before you, where, we ever, where he ever stands for us as our own high priest. Gathers together from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver, and preserve us, for to you alone we give all glory, honor, and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we gather our offerings this morning.
I invite you to please stand as we sing our offertory hymn, 956, Create in Me. Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power of and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And receive the Lord's benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant to you his peace. Amen. Please be seated as we sing our closing hymn, 921, on what has now been sung. <clears throat> Blessings be uh, with each and every one of you this morning. Uh, we have a few announcements uh, before we depart. Um, as I mentioned the prayers this morning, uh, we pray for uh, Bishop uh, Joanna Padiola and uh, Dr. Uh, Pavi Rosnan. Uh, the names should sound a little familiar. I uh, mentioned them last uh, year a couple times uh, uh, as we prayed for them. Uh, they authored a book back together in 2005. Uh, talking about uh, God's view on uh, homosexuality and uh, it really a, in accordance with the Word of God. And now that book and what they wrote are considered to be hate crimes. Tomorrow they go on trial for hate crimes. And, as, and it's really not up so much about them, but it really is about putting God's Word on trial. 
And so uh, I invite you to pray for them. And our insert in our bulletins this morning uh, tells a little bit about them, what's happening, and, and a prayer uh, uh, for them to help you uh, to pray for, for them as well. Because it, it's got to be very scary and, and unnerving to be going through this. Uh, but we pray that God will make them bold in their confession. Uh, and not only them, but all of God's people. Uh, because this isn't just happening in Finland. But it's going to be happening around the world. We, even here, like in Canada, uh, God's word being put on trial for hate crimes. You know, uh, pastors being thrown in jail uh, for following God's word rather than uh, the secular government at times. So uh, keep them in our prayers and keep our nation uh, and other nations in your prayers as well. Um, this morning, uh, we have our voters meeting. I'd like to invite... Uh, everyone to uh, stay for the voters meeting as uh, we go through the, the business of the last quarter. Uh, and if you haven't uh, officially been part of the voters meeting, uh, we can certainly uh, get, uh, take care of that during the voters meeting uh, this morning. Um, also, next week, uh, we'll be having our potluck luncheon, and that's going to take place after the worship service. The meat has uh, been, pre uh, has, uh, been uh, well, it will be prepared, but it's been taken care of uh, as long as, uh, as well as the plates and silverware. Uh, just bring your favorite dish to share, a side dish, uh, a salad, or, or, uh, you know, or dessert to share. And, uh, you know, that's always the favorite part of things. Uh, and uh, stay for a time of meal together with one another and that time of fellowship, which uh, is so healthy for a congregation to have uh, together. Um, also, there are uh, bags in the back for uh, for our shut-ins for Thanksgiving, or not Thanksgiving, for Valentine's Day. Uh, so uh, uh, please consider uh, writing a card uh, for those there, so that we can give th to them some some cheer and to extend the the love of God to them, uh, especially during Valentine's Day. Um, there's a number of other things that are happening around uh, the, today. Uh, there is at three o'clock a memorial service. Uh, that's being put on by the Falls City Circuit. It's going to be at St. Uh, Peter's at 3 o'clock. And the service is to help families who have maybe lost a, a child, maybe through a stillbirth, uh, maybe as a miscarriage, uh, whatever the circumstance was. Uh, so if that is you, uh, I invite you to come uh, for that uh, this, uh, this afternoon. Uh, or if you know somebody who has uh, gone through something similar, uh, please come uh, for that time of, of prayer. And uh, the pastors uh, uh, there and I will be there uh, to offer some counsel uh, following the service as well if uh, that's needed. So uh, please keep that in mind. Um, also, next Saturday is Nebraska Walk for Life. And so uh, things start begin around 8, 8.45 in the morning. So the details are in the bulletin. I invite you to look at that and, and perfectly consider going to that as well. Um, also in a couple of weeks on February 5th uh, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. we're having our circuit convocation and it's gonna deal with planning your Christian funeral. So we're gonna talk about uh, you know what is a funeral, what is a funeral service, what it's for, uh, uh, and how do we go about planning it. And, and so what are some good practices? What are some things that we want to uh, even avoid? So, uh, uh, so this is going to be at St. Peter's as well. And uh, that's going to be on February the 5th. Um, okay. Any other announcements that uh, uh, need to be made that didn't make it in the bulletin? Don't see any. Just another quick one. We started the book of Daniel on Wednesday night, so I invite you to come for that as well. We're just getting into the introductory material, so come and help study with us the book of Daniel. All right, that's the last one. God's blessings on your day. Uh, see you in a few minutes for the voters. Meeting.